My name is Meg Montgomery and I am the producer of the Quantum Evolution web series and, and I'm so glad that you're joining me for this very first episode of the series uh, made on January 5th of 2018. I am a strong, firm believer in the fact that the greatest divide in humanity is not between gender or race or religion or any other identifier but between those who understand the quantum realm and those who do not. Quantum physics came to us in 1900 and we're still not being taught even the most basic concepts in high school. So my goal here with this series is to bring to light some of this really vital information that's changed the world so dramatically, kind of behind the scenes, and how we are able to access that energy to affect the most extraordinary transformations not only in our own lives but in the world around us. So join me every Friday and you will learn many different aspects of what's going on in the quantum realm and hopefully by the end of the year you can achieve your own quantum activation. So join me, welcome, thanks for being here, enjoy. In the Western world we are conditioned to be disconnected from each other, from love, and from the pure energy of the universe. We're taught to define ourselves in very limited contexts, filtered through the lenses of religion, education, and the media. We're led to believe in limited food and energy and water, air and housing, and through the capitalist model we are taught that we must compete for those resources. We're also taught that we must fit into a predefined role or description in order to find a job that allows us to pay for those things that we need or want. And when we follow this path, we are constantly fed rhetoric and reminded information that feeds this mindset of limitation, which sends us deeper and deeper into debt, into misery and disconnection, where enough can never be achieved. This is what I call the old world mindset. It is the non-quantum world of duality and disconnection, designed and implemented over the course of eons, with the purpose of separating us from our quantum selves. What I have discovered in my study of the quantum universe over the course of about 18 years has replaced that narrative, and I've had many experiences which have shown me, without a shadow of a doubt, that there is indeed a most amazing universe beyond our five senses and beyond the indoctrination systems of education, religion, and the media. Once you begin to wake up from that old world reality, you notice subtle but very powerful changes. When we're able to stop reacting to all the positive and negative stimuli and just be, there becomes a clarity that comes into focus that reveals a vibrant way of being that exists just out of focus. Once you begin making different choices, you'll notice subtle but powerful changes in your life. Synchronicities, numbers, colors, smells, vibrancy, a whole new range of senses come in that are beyond our five senses. A little bit about my background. Until about the year 2000, I was an active musician, producer, and composer, mostly in New York City, but I also toured. As a trumpet player, I started out playing classical music and jazz, and I graduated from a conservatory. I spent a lot of time in the 1990s trying to make it in the music industry as a solo artist, but it didn't work out. After giving up that dream, 
I dedicated myself to the music called free jazz, which was one of the most enlightening experiences of my life and paved the way for my first spiritual awakening. Free jazz reset my understanding of the purpose of music. I stopped thinking of it as a career and began thinking of it as a way of life, as a form of healing, and I began to recognize how incredibly limited my mindset had been. My experience playing this music and being a part of this community was my first step towards becoming a quantum being. In about the year 2000, I was priced out of New York City, and I moved to a room in a loft in Newark, New Jersey, absolutely broke. At the time, I felt like a complete failure at life. There were so many missed opportunities, so many mistakes, and nothing to show for it. I was very depressed. Somehow, the following year, I was able to get a lease to my own loft in the same building, and over the next eight years, out of a raw factory space, I built a 12,000-square-foot artist's loft, complete with performance spaces, two kitchens, three bathrooms, and 12 live-work rooms. The experience of building and managing that space expanded my mind. It was amazing to live with so many ultra-creative people who were purely focused on their art. And really, despite all the problems of that time, it was really one of the most invigorating, inspiring, wonderful times of my life. I watched 9-11 happen from my front window. There was an immediate shift in my understanding of the world. Because of previous research, I knew automatically that it was an inside job, and I had a hunch that the purpose of it was to create the American police state, which we now know as Homeland Security. In the following years, I studied a lot, engaging with other people who had a similar understanding, and I was shown yet another door to consciousness, which in this case was somebody telling me how fear is used as a form of mind control. Once this information came into my mind, I was able to begin making new choices, which dramatically shifted my life in terms of happiness and self-control. During the early 2000s, I worked very hard trying to develop an internet business, but I failed over and over again. However, I was able to witness the rise of conscious entrepreneurship, where money is replaced by positive change as the driving motivation. And this shift gave me tremendous inspiration and a growing sense of global community. In 2008, I moved with my new family to the Catskill Mountains of New York, a rural agrarian community. There was literally nobody to talk to, nobody even slightly progressive, and I was raising a young child. So I turned to the forest and to the internet as my companions. Because of a threat of fracking in my area, I began to research water, starting with the work of Masaru Emoto, whose life work revealed that water is conscious, responsive, and has memory. This was another huge breakthrough for me in unveiling the quantum world. The forest was a laboratory where I was able to explore everything I was learning. How the green of grass and leaves expands the heart chakra, the communication networks of trees and fungi, the life and death cycles of minerals, plants, and animals, I began connecting with the energy of trees and spent countless hours photographing water and ice. I began to seriously meditate in about 2010, and then in 2012 with the transition into the Aquarian Age, my research began to concentrate heavily on quantum physics, which was discovered initially in the year 1900 by Max Planck, but of which is not included in our educational curriculum at all. I studied kundalini yoga for a while, which led me on the path of learning about quantum consciousness, and gradually I made the connection between both quantum physics and quantum consciousness, and have been following that path ever since. This newfound knowledge opened yet another door to a whole new level of understanding the quantum realm. I began to understand the purpose of the challenges we face. And there was a point at which all the frustration I ever felt about life just simply faded away. I was able to choose to be happy. I recently heard Jane Fonda say, It's the suffering that lets God in. And wherever that quote comes from, I have experienced it, and I know that it's true. Around 2012, I began having experiences of consciousness. 
I actually had my first experience in the late 1990s. A friend of mine was brutally murdered. And I went to visit the family, and when I pulled out her sewing basket to mend a shirt for her daughter, I had the sensation of thousands of white butterflies flittering out of the top of the basket. It was a very, very powerful sensation. And as I did research later on, I found out that that was her communicating with me, letting me know that her spirit had ascended and all was well. In 2012, I had my kundalini awakening, which for me was somewhat like an orgasm in my root chakra that allowed the entire energy system to begin flowing. My life experience had really blocked my throat chakra, and I still have to work on it very hard to keep it activated, and also my solar plexus. And I will go very in-depth into the chakra system um, later on in the series. Some of the other experiences of consciousness I've had include astral travel, telepathic communication, premonition dreams, and most recently, um, manifestation. These experiences give value to the journey and show us that we're on the right path, and they are a proof of activation of quantum energy. Over time, we can learn to wield this energy in order to answer difficult questions or make difficult decisions in our day-to-day lives. And that being said, I want to make it clear that I am not an ascended master of any kind. I'm not a channel. I'm not a monk. I'm not an expert. I'm just here, very literally, to share what I've learned in my journey so far. I am really just a traveler on this journey. The quantum mindset is one of infinite possibility. Once engaged with it, you can flower from considering yourself whatever it is you are now to whatever the ultimate possibility of who you might be. For me, I have flowered from being a musician to winning an award as a multimedia artist and educator. There are no limits except the ones that we set for ourselves. Expanding our sense of possibility is one of the most powerful journeys we can take. What I know for sure is that the world needs more mystics, more people who question, who choose love over hate, who volunteer and engage with their passion, and who decide to use their energy and resources for the common good. This is the reality, I hope, to help bring to fruition with this project. During the Quantum Evolution web series, I'll explore the quantum universe in relation to my own path of study, starting out with quantum physics and consciousness throughout the month of January. Some of the themes I'll be talking about in relation to the quantum universe include nutrition, farming, alternative health and healing, ancient history, meditation, chanting, yoga, economics, resiliency, free energy, healing PTSD, quantum spirituality, sacred geometry, music and sound, creative energy, and much, much more. Every final Friday of the month, I'll be interviewing a professional who is already bringing the quantum world to life with their products and services. If you have any questions that you'd like answered or subjects you'd like to be addressed, please email me and I'll see if I can fit it in. There are so many resources available for learning about the quantum world. I just finished one of the most popular books of all time called The Celestine Prophecy, which is a fictional account of one person's quantum awakening. It's a really quick and fun read, and I'm sure you can find it in used bookstores, as I did, or in Kindle, or wherever you want to find it. Gaia.com is a web channel with tons of videos on all things quantum, YouTube is full of information. Once you begin paying attention to consciousness and the quantum world, you'll find that the information you need comes right into your view. The purpose of this program is to give as broad a spectrum as possible of what's happening in the quantum realm. And I hope that you will join me every Friday as I come out with new episodes and join my YouTube channel and join me on Facebook. and. Be a part of the conversation. Let me answer your questions and uh, create a community around people who are very interested in bringing this quantum uh, activation to life in their own lives. So thank you so much for being here, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Blessings. 